one of the modern kingdoms of Battleworld lies a sector that is peaceful, but still, no places without crime. Every kingdom has their problems, and this sector is no different. This version of New York, called Arcadia, is governed by its mayor, Norman Osborn. Her mission began on a gloomy night. The rain hammers her suit, but still, she finds a strange urge to don her costume and head out to fight crime. Spider Gwen's senses led her to a monastery where thieves are well into their night of robbing graves. Spider Gwen makes quick work out of the robbers and webs them up for the authorities to find. She takes a moment and approaches two tombstones. One marked, Gwen Stacy, gone too soon. The other reads, Captain George Stacy. Elsewhere in the city, another crime is taking place. A mysterious figure stands watching over the criminal activities. But not long after that, he witnesses a Spider-Man entering the scene. Spider UK is here to thwart the criminals. Soon after, Anya, the Spider-Girl, enters a fray to assist her friends. The criminals are rounded up, but the man watching the action can see that the fight is not yet over. Oscorp fighter vessels are en route, and a horde of heavily armed soldiers emerge from the containers. It is a trap, a trap set for the spiders. The man can't stand idly by, thus he dons his version of the spider suit. With the help of this new Spider-Man, Spider UK and Spider Girl comes out victorious. They take a moment to meet this new friend. He introduces himself as Pavitar Pavrikar, and he tells him about his theory. You see, the Spider-Man from India has been feeling a deja vu, a phenomena, a feeling that none of them belong to this world, that they might have met before, and that nothing is as it seems. While on her way to work, Gwen Stacy ponders over her life. She once had the great idea of googling herself, but what she finds led her to even more questions. She apparently died at the George Washington Bridge, sometime after her father died. Spider-Man was there battling with his arch enemy, the Green Goblin. He hasn't been seen in over a year now. The information was fuzzy, but the name Osborne was connected to the incident. But lack of evidence couldn't tie anything to Norman Osborne, who happens to be the mayor. On her way to work, Gwen passes Norman's public speech regarding the incidents that happened last night in the cemetery and in the naval yard. He tells the crowd that everything is under control and Oscorp Industries is on top of the matter. Amongst the crowd, Osborne recognizes Stacy and congratulates her on the fantastic work that she has been doing for his company, even though she is new. Moments later, Stacy is at work, but you see, Gwen isn't here to be the next top employee at Oscorp. No, she is here because her senses informs her that there is something dark and sinister at play and Oscorp is connected to it. After months of work, she found a door that no one else enters except for three. It took a while, but Gwen has mapped out the schedules, habits, and manners of these three employees. Today will be the day that she will attempt to push her plans to the next level and enter through. She grabs for the key card, but is detected. Good thing our spider heroes always have a backup plan, and the man is webbed up and immobilized. Gwen discovers a file on the Sinister Six. She also found pictures of other spider heroes and her dual identity in the mix. There is one more door to enter. The label reads, Peter. What she finds inside is nothing she has ever seen before. But the strange thing is, that seeing this spider hog is like seeing an old friend again. Gwen quickly removes all of the tubing and spider ham begins to regain consciousness. But then a door creaks open and Norman Osborne stands unsurprised that Gwen has found his secret lab. We now jump back in time, an undetermined amount of time. Spider Ham finds himself swinging through a world that is not his own, a world filled with hairless ape men. This world is strange and Ham finds it difficult to blend in. But then things started going well for a friend as he finds a home with a blind woman with half her wits. Ham would later find a job with a circus. Things are looking good for our Spider Ham as he acclimates to his new life in a world that is not his own. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we are reviewing and recapping the Spider-Verse issue 2. I've read a few of the other Secret Wars tie-ins and I gotta say first and foremost, these tie-ins are quite entertaining. Last year, I covered all of the Spider-Verse issues except for two, so I was super excited when I found out that the Spider-Verse would continue in Secret Wars. So let's get into talking about it. So we are introduced to our five favorite Spider heroes from back in the Spider-Verse. Gwen Stacy, Spider UK, Anya the Spider-Girl, the Spider-Man from India, and Spider-Ham. They all find themselves living in a city, but they have no memories of their past life. Even though we never saw the end of their respective worlds, I love this little nod that confirms that all of their worlds are gone, but somehow they survived and still have their memories. 
but of course we have some overlapping, such as Gwen Stacy being alive, but her death bleeds into this new kingdom, and she even have a gravestone in her memory. I don't need any complicated way of explaining how this happened, so I loved how we are left to ponder over this reveal. So in this kingdom, Norman Osborn is mayor. As far as I can tell, he is also the Baron. This is one of my minor concerns over the timeline of this new battle world. Do miss their ruler and they are referred to as barons who has kingdoms to rule. This gives me the feeling of a medieval setting. In Arachnia, the setting feels like modern times and Osborn is referred to as a mayor. This doesn't feel as natural but this is just me nitpicking. So at the end, we get a reveal that Norman has been trying to collect the various spider heroes for his own sinister purposes. Newsarama has reported that we are still missing Spider-Man Noir, Mayday Parker, and THE Spider-Man himself. I can't wait till they show up. Now the question is, what do they mean by THE Spider-Man himself? Peter Parker from 616? There's also a Peter Parker that will be living in the Regency, so there seems to be a lot of spider heroes running around. But then we got a police force of Thor, so this is shaping to be something pretty epic. This is one thing I noticed when I was reading the tie-ins. We get to know the barons of the kingdoms. There has been barons that are good, such as She-Hulk who rules Arcadia. But then there are barons that are seeking to usurp Doom's throne, such as Modoc who lives in the kingdom of Kilville in Sector 34. At the end of the Secret Wars, I predict that Doom will gather barons that will stand by his side to fight the heroes. But I'm gonna wager that a few barons will side with the heroes like She-Hulk. So if Osborn survives to the end of Battleworld, I bet that he will be a force that Doom can count on. Or maybe he will team up with the other barons to take Doom's throne. Whatever the conclusion will be, I'm super excited and I'm loving getting to know these barons. So what do you think about the Spider-Verse issue 1? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and I'll see you next time in another Secret Wars video.